Okay, this is part two. We're going to start with basically the lift gate. You're going to pull this back piece off. This piece is massive. It has one electrical connection here. Um, again, you just basically get your trim tool into the side and you just, you know, work your way out. You're going to think you're breaking it at times, but it'll be fine. Um, here are your nice little attachment points. Um, I did not know where they were, so I just kind of had to guess, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever, I don't know why I'm counting for you. But when you go put this back on, make sure all those line up. I didn't, and there's definitely one of these broken off that, well, I heard it rolling around at first. I haven't heard it since then, but um, I figured if it bothered me enough, I'd pull it off. So do yourself a favor. Make sure you line it up when you put it back on. Having two people would really help. Um, and and then, because yeah, because I was putting it together in one of these, you'd hit it back in, you'd hear it go thump, and then just pop, pop right back out. I didn't know what was going on, of course, I just did it the stupid man way and just hit it really hard, and then of course you heard crack. And instead of it going in, it just broke, so whatever. So um, after that, you'll pull this little top piece right here. Again, same kind of a deal. These are at a weird angle, so when you're pulling, um, you'll notice these, you know, go to the outside and these start going up. So don't, you know, kind of do it with care. These are the best connections though, so it's not like you can really screw anything up. You just pull and it comes out. So now you've got your whole lift gate off. Everything is good. At this point, it's pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to kind of, let me try to get the light so if you can see it. You can see it better because you do want to see. It's basically just a bunch of screws. It is pretty obvious, or nuts to take off. It is pretty obvious which ones you take off for the um, brake lights and whatnot. So, take off that little uh, and 10 millimeter right there. Those little screws, there's four I believe. Two on the edge. You're going to take off all the little bulb harnesses. There's another, I don't know why. I got close-ups of everything so much. I went overboard on some of it, but whatever. Okay, so you pop those off. Again, this is one of these little things. Push in, pull. Life is good. There you go. Alright, now you'll notice that you're going to have a harness in there that says light bar without camera. So you're thinking, heck yeah, man, I can just pull mine or pull this back piece off, put the other one on, and plug in the harness. No. Incorrect. So now for the fun part. Okay, well, not quite yet. This is your brake light from the inside. Go ahead and pop that little thing off. All the screws are done. You've got two little things. You can pretty much just push it out without a trim tool. doesn't really matter. And there is your brake light taken all the way out. All right, there's the garage floor. You're going to have a lot of panels laying around. Interior panel on the bottom, interior, all your stuff doesn't matter. I need to point that out. Okay, so this is the back piece once you get it off. These are all the screws that you uh, took off from the inside. So here's the back piece that came off of mine. Here's the back piece that you order. What really sucks is this is going to come with the back, um, with the camera and everything, and then the thing that says Jeep right here, they tell you to have painted to match your vehicle which is just total crap because who wants to pay three hundred and something dollars for this backup camera and then pay somebody to paint it so instead what you do is go to the big or what I did there's maybe a better way but you go to the big pan the ass of separating these two things and you'll notice that there's like a uh, cement like putty kind of stuff so you have to go in there with your trim tool and pop each one of those things hoping you don't break it and the way that it is attached on top of just all that putty is um, with these little things. You'll see these clips. They slip through the um, interior piece right here. And they'll come through it and up. That little lip will catch right there. So what you've got to do is go underneath here, pop and break all that cement from underneath it, and then come right here and try to bend that piece forward so that that uh, little lip slips down and underneath it. And you got to do that without breaking those pieces because they're flimsy. Here's one that I did break. Um, 
I got through without breaking many, but um, I made up for it with just some uh, JB Weld. So I'm not getting that crap apart again if I want to. So there we go. I finally got the new harness right here. I guess, sorry, new harness, new harness up here. My white Jeep exterior piece there. Let's keep going. Um, and what's nice is the new ones, they're made probably not from the manufacturer because you can tell they're not even like clicked all the way through and put together. This was poor, really poor on whoever's part made this. Um, see, there's one that's like not even pushed through at all. So, okay, you put it together, bam, you got your camera on there, everything is all good. Um, oh, here's a video of it, we'll move on, I've already got that posted. Okay, so now, you go ahead and put your camera piece on the back, obviously where it is. Here's the part most people are going to be interested in. Sorry, I guess I should have been following the uh, instructions on this. Blah, 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 instructions say to separate all the wiring harnesses. You just pull the brake lights and your exterior piece. Oh. Oh, yeah, it says new panel. New panel must be painted to match body color. Yeah, right, screw you guys. Let me go over here. It says, go ahead and put the new one on, reattach, blah, blah, blah. This is all obvious. Then, up here, this is just telling you how to route the, the new wiring harness. It doesn't really matter. Just follow the existing wiring. Use the zip ties provided. Life is all wonderful. Here's the parts you want to know about. Okay. So, what you're going to do is remove the... Goodness the black and the white and orange wire from your vehicle connector. And then you're going to insert this into the provided wiring harness that comes with this Mopar one. Okay? So, up here in this picture, you're going to pull this black and this white and orange. You're going to pull that off the existing harness and you're going to put it on this new one. If you wanted to not pay $300, right? This would be the interesting part. And I should have done a better job, but I know this is what people want to know. How can I not pay $300 for a backup camera and have it installed OEM style and make it all work? So the way you would do that is create this harness kind of on your own. And so this is the Mopar end, right? So this is the harness provided by Mopar on this backup install. The only two wires coming um, that you're going to pull from your other, uh, from your existing connector is going to be, yeah, and I tore it up. In fact, I tore it up trying to get these out because I didn't know how. I did not have where it says here, note, maybe, let me see if I have oil on it. Maybe that was how I'm doing it. It says, note, use a Miller, I'll just read it, Miller 6680 depopulate tool to remove the wires. I did not have that tool. I do not know how these little wire connections work. So I just tore the crap out of it. I just cut it up and pulled them out. Um, it says insert it in pin 8 and pin 9. Do the numbers because whenever I put there, it did not match this picture and I was kind of worried. But I went ahead and put it in pin 8 and pin 9. So here's the part most people will be interested in. That is, the Mopar provided wiring harness has a blue, a gray, and an orange. A blue and a gray, I'm reading down the left side, by the way, if not obvious. Blue, a gray, a red, a base wire, or just bare wire, sorry, bare, and then a black, and then a white slash orange in order there. Then, the vehicle you're going to have that connect to, the blue is going to match blue. Gray and orange from Mopar matches green. The blue slash gray matches a blue and a gray, um, and I believe, I really should have looked, but I, I'm not 100% sure. I wrote this after doing it by my pictures, and so um, somebody hopefully, if had, they've done this before, chime in on the comments. Red goes to red, base wire goes to base, black goes to black, white orange goes to red. So I'm going to show you real quick. This is the part you're going to pause and go back and forth a million times on if you're trying to do this on your own. So check out 
pins. We've got blue, orange, and gray. There's this light blue and, uh, and gray that goes here to the next pin over, and then a red. And then on top of that, you've got your bare wire, then a black, the black from the vehicle, the white and the orange from the vehicle. These are the two that you pull and put in, okay? So you got those. Move to the next one. This is the side from your vehicle. Blue matches blue. Green matches the gray slash orange. Next is going to be a blue gray and a blue gray. So you can barely see in the back. That it should go fold down straight right there. Um, red is going to match red. This is going down to the very big bare corner. Bare wire matches bare wire going up here. Black matches black. Yep, and then a white orange, oh, another black, another black, and then the white orange actually matches with the red. So it's a little crazy. There are two red wires. I'm oh, sorry, I'm all sheesh. I don't know how much of that was like crammed against the screen because I was all looking at my hand instead of uh, recording. I'm sorry, guys. But hopefully that'll make sense. That's the best I can do for you. If somebody else has a picture, please like post it or do something. Or, you know, chime in the comments. Maybe I'll add it if somebody helps me out. Okay, so there is what your connection will look like. I tried my best to look at this picture for a long time and, uh, and see what matches. But what I just read off to you, I believe, is correct. Okay, so here's the Mopar side. There's your wiring harness from your vehicle. And um, then you're ready to go. Sorry, guys. I know I could have done a better job for you all that want to do this on your own. So moving on, just throw it up there. Use, you know, straps or, uh, or little zip ties. Run it around. This is the most annoying part. You are going to run it up into this hole, down into there if you want to do it legit, and pull it through here. And that's going to be, that was the biggest pain in the ass of the entire install because this is pretty thick. And so you've got to like fish it down here one or two hours at a time, pull it all out. It was just a pain. But it does look, you know, legit. When you're done, you don't see any wire sticking out. So blah, blah. Okay, got it. Thank you, Google. Da -da -da -da. All right, let's see what I've come up with on here. Okay, so. That's all cool. We've done all that. All right, so next what we're gonna do is run the wiring down the side where your subwoofer would normally be, hook up the uh, ground, and run the wire all the way to the front. So, you'll notice it does go quick after all of that fun. There's pulling the wires through, running them down the side. There is where you connect your ground. It's already got some other ground connected, so you just piggyback on top. Run this with the existing wires all the way. This is rear passenger back. I just tucked it underneath there all the way. Run it up and around towards the front driver's side. This is the uh, driver's seat. This is on that column or whatever. Just tuck it around and go underneath. That's a real big pain to get undone, but basically you'll see there's just a few connections. You just pull this out. It doesn't I didn't take that whole piece all the way off. I don't even know what that is. Okay, this is the driver or the uh, passenger side door sill or whatever. If you want to see, you can just it's pop 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 pop. Just pull that thing. Just wham. Pull it up. It goes off. And now we are on to the part where we're going to start removing the um, da -da -da -da, right underneath the glove box. And you're pretty much going to pull the entire glove box off. I'm going to go through this kind of quick. Okay, so there are two little pieces on the bottom. This doesn't have to do with the glove box. This is just kind of where your feet would kick. So... Let's go ahead and look. This is the right hand side where your foot would, would be touching if you lean it up against the right side. That just pops off pretty easy. Underneath there are, you can see them, one, two, 
three, 